Hi, I'm James Moore, and welcome to an Ideal Calibrations How to Calibrate Your Gas Detector Series. We're going to look at the gas clip, multi-gas clip IR today. Uh, let's get it started up, and I'll talk a little bit about what makes this monitor cool before we get to the calibration. So I'll turn that on, and it's going to go through the alarms due, uh, when the cows are due, not the alarms due, geez, the alarm set points, when the cows are due, and it's going to initialize the sensors on there. So we'll let that get going. In the meantime, this is a cool unit. It has a cool LEL sensor that works off infrared. So it has different curves than you would have on a catalytic bead LEL sensor. So make sure if you're used to the standard pentane is 2 to 1 for methane and propane is about, uh, you know, probably about 1.7 or so, uh, just make sure, or 1.5, make sure that you're aware that this isn't going to have the same curves. This is going to have different curves. So you need to make sure that you check the manual for any of your calibration curves or your response factors for LEL gases, so any of your explosives out there. So make sure you take a look at those. Uh, it does calibrate with methane on this unit. Uh, one of the cool things with this IR sensor is that it energizes the explosive gases and what it does is it tracks what the IR absorption spectrum is for those different gases. Now it's got one problem. Uh, two of the gases that you would normally detect on an explosive sensor, which are acetylene and hydrogen, it cannot be detected because they're diatomics, which essentially means that the IR emitter on this won't energize the bonds on those molecules, so it can't detect it. It just it passes right through it. So this is going to say Cal do on here. I'm going to set this down for a sec. And so what will happen is you won't be able to detect those. Uh, you've got a little bit of a backup in that you can detect both on the CO sensor. Hydrogen, for instance, will send the CO sensor up high, so you'll kind of get an idea that something's there, although I wouldn't rely on it, but it's, you know, it's there for a fallback. Uh, and acetylene will have a negative response, so it'll actually go negative on you. And if you see that, you can take an educated guess that it's acetylene. That said, if you're working with hydrogen or acetylene primarily, I wouldn't recommend this. I'd recommend that instead of getting the IR model, you get the Pellister model. So it's not that you have to go to a different manufacturer. Gas Club does sell uh, this monitor with a traditional Pellister sensor, but the battery won't last as long. This IR sensor is very low energy. So what ends up happening is you can get a runtime out of this thing like 14 days or so. I think the manufacturer might say it goes almost a month uh, for the diffusion model. The pump model is about three days because it has to run that pump. But uh, for the most part, this gets uh, really great battery life. The Pellister, you're going to get the standard uh, 12, 14 hours. I'm not certain on the exact spec, but yeah, it's something that you can look up. If you have a question on that, if you email me, I'll get back to you with what the exact runtime is for the other models. So you can see this unit is showing CalDo. So we're going to go through and we're going to calibrate this. Uh, to get started, calibration gas-wise, this is a 25 part per million H2S, 100 part per million CO, 50% LEL methane, and 18% oxygen mix, which we can verify on our cylinder here, 25 H2S, 100 CO, 50% LEL methane, 18% oxygen. And we can check here, and we see that the expiration is in January 2022, and we're in uh, 2021 now. We've got plenty of time. Also going to need a 0.5 liter per minute fixed flow regulator with the C10 fitting, our Cal adapter. I don't really need this gas clip pen, but it's going to keep the cylinder from rolling away on me. So first things first, let's get our cylinder set up and then we'll get to the calibration. We're going to open the valve on our regulator. Okay, open it up, back it off just a little bit. And what that does is it opens this up so when the pressure hits the regulator, instead of circulating any of this room air that's in here or that's in the valve on the cylinder, uh, it's going to blow it out the top. So grab your cylinder, grab your regulator, screw them in, and once you hear gas begin to flow, there it goes, go ahead and back that regulator off and close it up. Okay, gas stopped flowing, continue screwing it in. That's good to go. All right, take our calibration adapter here. I'm going to put this on the top. Now, sometimes this is a little bit of a tight fit for this. Just just work with it, and you'll get it on there. And one of the tricks you just kind of get it on there and wiggle. You don't want to go too far down. See how I'm just going past the first hose barb? That's that's fine. You don't need to go down all the way down to the bottom here. If you do that, it's going to be a real pain getting the tubing off of there. So make sure you're careful. All right. Now, put this down. This is ready to go. 
we're going to put it into calibration mode by pressing and holding this button here. Now it's going to go off, and then it's going to count down again, and it's going to go into cal mode. Perfect. Auto zero. Release the button. And we'll get ready with our cal adapter here. You'll see it has this three slots here. Apply gas. We want the bottom one to go on the bottom there. Put it on. Click. Oop. That is the one risk of having that not on there all the way. There we go. If you yoink on it, sometimes it comes off. So let's pop that on. Now we're going to apply gas. Open the valve. Back off just a little. Okay. Now this will detect automatically when the gas is flowing. So we'll let that go ahead. Uh, you'll notice it has similar operation to a BW Technologies unit. Uh, as I understand it, that's because some of the people who were with BW Technologies early ended up being involved with gas clip. So you'll see it's a lot of similarity there, um, but obviously not exactly the same. But that calibration menu is the same there. So I'm waiting for this to detect gas. One of the things with the IR sensor on this, it's not quite as quick as some of the other ones. Now, ooh, we got an arrow two there. So now, don't worry so much about the arrow two. That means this has a sensor that has to be replaced. Uh, has to be replaced. So I'll get to that and we'll replace that sensor. Uh, maybe make another video on how to do that for you. But in the meantime, you can see 25 parts per million on the H2S, 100 parts per million on the CO, and 50% on the LEL methane. So we're going to let that go through. Uh, it should show an oxygen sensor here. So that's a, a good signal that we, uh, we're going to need to go in and fix this unit. And you'll see how it dropped off the uh, LEL gas there. Now it's going to drop one of these one by one. Okay, there goes H2S. And it'll do CO last. Great. Cal in 365. And now we'll turn it off. And we're going to pop the hood. Turn that off, that's nice and tight. Don't overturn that, just put it in light. And we'll hold the button here so that no one's eardrums are blown out. Perfect. Okay, so these have all come down. Now, something interesting happened here. That 20.9 on the oxygen sensor should have read 18. So there's one of two problems going on. One, this unit's incorrectly set up, and it's set up for 20.9% oxygen instead of 18, which is the amount of the manufacturer standard. So I'm going to get in and check that out, uh, and we'll do that in another video. Ah, you can see it's starting to go up now. So my bet is probably somebody set this with the wrong config. So we'll go through and we'll fix that up and bring this to an 18% oxygen. Uh, in the meantime, we've watched everything else has come down. So that's how to calibrate this unit. Uh, if you have any questions or anything that you've seen here, you know, feel free to leave a comment or shoot us an email. Uh, our email address is support at idealcalibrations.com. And our phone number here for any questions is 734-956-0539. Uh, if the video helped you out, try and hit the like button for us or subscribe to our channel. We'd really appreciate it. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us. I'm going to get to fixing this oxygen sensor, and maybe we'll put up another video on it. Thanks. You have a great day, and stay safe.